Hey, good afternoon. It's Mike Torino, and I'm back with a second episode detailing my experience so far with my mini excavators that I ordered from a company in China. I'm here in the Philippines. Today is May 19th, and this will be episode two of the ex excavator series. And uh, since episode one, I really haven't done much. I've got sidetracked with some other projects, but what I finally got back to on the excavator, uh, I'll show you right now. What I found out I needed was a, you know, a better grease gun. The one that came with the, the excavator was a manual hand pump and it didn't, uh, the, the, the grease cartridges that I ordered from Amazon didn't fit no matter how I tried to modify them to, to get fit. I think this type of grease gun that came with it, you actually have to hand jam the grease into the gun, you know, <laughs> and then, then pressurize it, you know, install the plunger. At any rate, um, I did get it to work. I just kind of squeezed grease in there and it worked for about, well, it was awful to tell you the truth. The, uh, I, I put grease everywhere but in, in the machine. Uh, first thing, like when you, when I hooked up the end to a grease fitting, I mean, grease was just going everywhere except inside, you know, of the fitting. That was the first problem with that, with that gun. And then second problem was once, once you insert, you know, connect the, the fitting to your Zerk fitting, it wouldn't come off. I mean, Pulling on it didn't help. I had to get it. Sometimes I had to get a screwdriver, flathead screwdriver, in there and pry it off of the grease fitting. And then, third thing that happened, the uh, the hose just came off. I mean, it, with that the pressure, uh, it didn't last long. It just piece piece of junk basically. So, uh, what you see here is I went and ordered a an Inco uh, battery powered grease gun. I saw these being used by other guys and gals and they seem to work well and they are easy on the hands and the elbow. So I ordered this and again my my grease cartridges that I ordered wouldn't go in. I actually had to saw off the lip of the cartridge to get it to go in. But it was successful. Um, again, the, the fitting, when I hooked it up to the Zerk fitting uh, on the machine, same thing, I, I ended up getting grease everywhere but inside where it needed to go. So, that was part one, getting a, a powered grease gun. Uh, that's going to work out. However, uh, to try to alleviate the, the problem with grease going everywhere except where it needs to be, I ordered a, what they call, uh, uh, well, there's a company called Lock and Lube, and they make this this contraption here, which has kind of a, um, a spring-loaded jaw system to better grab the Zerk fitting, and uh, supposedly, you know, their their claim to fame is grease where it needs to go, not where it doesn't, something like that. So I haven't tried this yet. This is going to be the first time I tried using this lock and lube patent pending supposedly awesome grease fitting 
Zerk, Zerk fitting attachment with my battery powered pump and at the same time Lock and Lube also offers this kit which has an assortment of fitting attachments uh, I think there's some 90, 90 degree attachments in here some other things that I'm not sure you know, what they're used for but I may need that someday here's the and, and it also comes with an extension hose but the main thing I ordered this for really was to get uh, the the other type of of uh, of grease fitting that the that's in use is the ones that are for low clearance and let's see if I could find one real quick they're typically on on your rams like right here and I, I'll be honest when the first time I saw that I didn't know what it was but I was thinking well maybe maybe these actuators you know the ball and maybe they're a seal bearing uh, no, that's not the case. What this is, it's a Zerk fitting. It's just a low, pro low profile fitting that they use on rotating parts uh, where there's not a lot of clearance. And but you can't use your standard fitting, you know, on your grease gun. You have to use a needle attachment, and you put the needle in that little ball bearing. Or, or ball valve I should say in here and that's how you feed grease into these type of fittings haven't tried it yet but there there's many of them all over the machine and lastly I added to my order a bunch of of these caps uh, dust caps debris caps whatever you want to call it for your zerk fitting and they're all one size it does fit on there good but my question to anybody that may know is they they have these like retainers so they won't come off but they won't fit under the grease fitting under the zerk fitting and if even if they did it would probably leak right and then so I thought maybe they fit over there and then there's enough room to close it again but no that's not the case because that would also block your attachment so I'm pretty sure that these will fall off but I mean it's on there pretty snug but if anybody has an idea of why they added the retainer and where to hook it on to let me know and then finally I added uh, uh, I found 215 piece sets of grease fittings different kinds different sizes elbows straight and but I'm pretty sure the machine only takes uh, 10 millimeter. But uh, anyway, I ordered metric and I ordered an SAE kit because you never know. Also, before I start uh, lubing this thing, I also want to share my experience with some of the attachment points. And so this is... Uh, this is one of the attachments that I had to finagle with for a while to get the quick hitch working. But in in doing so, uh, I found that so the ex the excavator is delivered with uh, not pins like this, but uh, just a a bolt and nut uh, used to to hold it to, you know as a through bolt you know through your your pins 
and in some places like here that that's fine you know it's not in in a place where you're going to be repeatedly taking it out and in so a through bolt is fine in my opinion for something like that but for something that you're going to be doing uh, you know, changing a lot like accessories the through bolt doesn't work because it you know it's good for one time and then you're going to strip the threads because if it if they're that if they're tight and they always are you know you're going to destroy the bolt and so what I did is I ordered some of these quick release pins this is a uh, 7.75 millimeter and I'm going to the, the holes aren't lined up right now with my pins but when I when I do get that I'll have these quick release pins used here and then I'll safety wire I'll safety wire the the ring you know over the end of the pin with some 32,000 safety wire so hopefully that's going to help out with my quick change scenarios here all right so I'll be back with the first time that I used the powered grease gun so I'm going to try this for the first time and the idea behind this again is that you have spring-loaded attachment that will grab on to the zerk fitting and supposedly it's easy on easy off <laughs> so it's it's on there it went on nice and of course without pressing the release it's on there and I'm gonna fire up the uh, the Enco battery operated grease gun and this particular model is adjustable you can adjust the pressure so I'm just gonna leave it on two I think it's one through five and we'll see what kind of squeeze out we get and hopefully all of the grease is going to go in and not everywhere else As you can see, so far, what they what they've said uh, doesn't seem to be accurate because the grease that I just attempted to pump into my into my uh, ram there has just made a big mess. And there you go. So now I'm gonna figure out why is I mean is it possible that it's it's full of grease and but if if it is I mean I you know the, you're supposed to have evidence of the squeeze out in the joint of the pin and that, I don't see that the only thing I see is the grease just not going anywhere Certainly not what Lock and Lube says. Uh, before I blame them, I'm going to have to maybe take this pin out to see if, if, if the pin, if the hole in the pins are clogged. Uh, that would certainly be a reason. So I'll be back, see what we find there. All right, I'm back here inside the garage. Had a new twist on what I was doing as far as greasing the machine. Uh, so if you remember when when I said that I had purchased a uh, a set of Zerk fittings, you know, one set, 115 pieces metric, and then I purchased another one, you know, SAE or Imperial just for the hell of it. And wouldn't you know, I ended up needing the SAE 
type, which was really strange. So I have to back up a little bit. When I was trying to demonstrate how I used the new power greaser and the attachment um, that's supposed to be a lot better than you know your standard one and the grease uh, I mean their claim to fame grease goes in not everywhere else well the this case the grease went everywhere else so I was thinking well maybe maybe it's not the the gun or the attachment maybe it's the actual fitting zerk fitting that that came with the machine so I removed it this is the one that came with the machine the, the spring was, inside was a little damaged but I think they all get a little smashed you know once they're used uh, so I said well let's just change it so I went to my my newly purchased metric set so I said well let's I know it's M10 and the thread pitch that I bought was a 1.5 pitch. Well, come to find out the this is too too rough of a pitch. It's this 1.5. I'm sure I needed 1.75 or maybe even a 2.0. So this whole kit I bought as far as the M10, the threads are too coarse, not going to work. So I went and, and started looking at the SAE fittings. So I popped a, uh, I looked at a, a one, uh, one eighth inch 27. So 27, I believe it's 27 threads per inch. And it physically, it's a lot. It's larger. It's a. I can't make this up. So it's not even an eighth. It's it. Well, so my neither a metric socket or a imperial socket is an exact fit for for this. Uh, best I could do was 11 millimeter, whereas the original one was 10 millimeter, perfect fit. And this SAE one, the Imperial is is the same. It's loose, and these are six point sockets. So I could use either the Imperial or the metric, but they're both a little bit loose, even with six point sockets. So I'm using a uh, 11 millimeter to replace it and then we didn't find that the, the threads per inch are the same so I wasn't at risk of damaging the the pin and so I I put a new Imperial or SAE Zerk fitting in and lo and behold I hooked up the the gun and it worked great there was no spillage and uh, I had good squeeze out all over. This was on the ram fitting, and I had good squeeze out all, of, you know, where it should be coming out on the sides of the ram, of the knuckle. And it was good. There was like dirty grease coming out, and then I saw the new grease come out. I'm happy with that. So I kind of stopped there and kind of tried to regroup and see what uh, I might have to do. I did pop the gun on another Zerk fitting and it seemed like it was fine. So maybe this one was just something wrong with this fitting. It doesn't look clogged, but if you look real close, uh, let's see, I don't know if you can, maybe you'd be able to see that, but you know, one, the original fit, fitting that came is a lot shorter as far as the nipple and again I answered one of my questions at the beginning of this video 
the the yellow caps that I purchased, you know, they wouldn't stay on the original one because it's too short, right? But now I could put the retaining part of the plastic cap on here and still have room to grease it and still have room for the cap itself to seat on the fitting. So I think where that leaves me is probably go back and purchase a, another set of metric Zerk fittings, probably 110, M10, uh, 1.75 or 2.0. I'll have to measure these to find out exactly what the equivalent of 27 threads per inch is in metric. If you know, pop me a message there in the comments. And so it, it was getting real hot. You know, it, it, the worst time to be outside here is between noon and four, especially during the summer. But other than that, it's beautiful. Like from, from four to dusk in the evenings are, is, is fantastic. From dawn till maybe 9.30, 10 o'clock, you, you're all right. But then it starts to heat up around 11, and, and then from noon to 4, I, you need to find some shade or some air conditioning. Uh, so I'm going to pick up on the, the saga, and uh, I'll just leave you with this. I, I did talk about the, these quick-release pins that I purchased to replace my through bolts in, in some of the uh, some of the grease or some of the pins that I'm going to be taking out more often than not, and I ordered I ordered four of these, and two of them well they're they're almost every one of them is different if you if you if you look here and uh, so this one has a has a has a head, you know, a stepped top hat kind of head, and but the the end of it isn't beveled; it's just flat. And the other one, it has a head. It's pretty much the same thing. The end of it is flat. And then I have one, another one that it it has a top hat end, but it has a nice bevel, you know, as they should at the end. And then number four doesn't have a top hat end, so I don't know if I probably don't want to use this because it's just going to be riding on this, um, just on the keychain deal here. And But it does have a nice bevel. So and this was the same seller on Lazada and I just ordered four and I got kind of four different ones but that's the that's the price you pay sometimes Lazada is like the Asian uh, regional Amazon so with that I'm going I've got the excavator back here inside the garage where it's nice comfortable 72 degrees and I'll be picking up the rest of what I want to do here probably on episode three. But I wanted to get this out there. All right. Thanks for watching. Talk to you all later.